this is New Scene 39, with anchors Jim Hemphill and Ann White. Weather by Jim Conlon. Sports with Chuck Carpenter. Good evening. Marshalltown police this weekend arrested three Marshalltown residents and charged two with second-degree burglary and one with conspiracy to commit a burglary. Preliminary reports from the Marshalltown Police Department surrounding the case are sketchy, but do indicate that a recent investigation by officials from Fisher Control and the Police Department turned up evidence that items had been stolen from the Fisher Control's factory. Lori and Jeffrey Finch are charged with second-degree burglary and are both being held under $11,500 bond. Kevin Krogh has been charged with conspiracy to commit a burglary and is being held under $2,700 bond. A Marshalltown woman received injury and multiple charges this weekend following a traffic mishap on North 2nd Street. Police say a vehicle driven by Linda Danner went out of control on North 2nd and struck a parked vehicle, pushing that parked car some 34 feet ahead. Officers say Danner left her vehicle on foot, but when she was apprehended, she was charged with second offense drunk driving, driving while her license is suspended, failure to maintain control of her vehicle, and striking an unattended vehicle. Danner was treated at Marshalltown Medical and Surgical Center and then released. Damage incurred during the incident amounted to around $2,600. Saturday was the day for the March of Dimes Walk America Walkathon, with dozens of walkers turning out for the benefit event. Here's a closer look. The walkers started gathering around 8 Saturday morning in Kiwanis Park. The starting signal was given at 9 as the participants began their 30 kilometer trek. That's about 18 miles. March of Dimes coordinator of Chapter Services, Susan Thies, talked about the walk. Walk America is one of our biggest and funnest events for the March of Dimes. This spring, over 100,000 people will be out walking for the March of Dimes to raise funds against birth defects in over 30 cities. We hope to raise over $100 million for the March of Dimes. This is a walk where everyone is invited uh, of any age. We have prizes for the youngest walker and also the oldest walker. They'll be walking throughout the city of Marshalltown, uh, coming back to uh, the park here for a final, a finish line. Um, it's really a fun event. It's also a healthy event. We have various merchants are going to be handling checkpoints for us. Uh, our prizes range from a 10-speed bike donated by Kmart down to little gag gifts. Several businesses were involved in the walkathon. Marshalltown Walmart manager Steve Copeland had a group of his workers walking. We've got approximately 35 to 40 associates out here this morning. Uh, Last year was the first year that we got into it and we really enjoyed it. We feel like it's a very good cause for the March of Dimes and we're glad to be here. Different people had different reasons for participating in the walkathon, but as these Miller Junior High students agreed, the cause was the main thing. Well, we're doing this, I guess, because for the fun of it, mostly. We want to keep in shape, too. Yeah, in shape. For the cause. And the cause, you know. And. Just to do something on Saturday morning because they're usually boring. Well, while that March of Dimes walkathon was indeed a tremendous success, a LeGrand man, Patrick Gustafson, led officers on a chase routine this weekend after LeGrand police were called to quell a domestic dispute at a LeGrand residence. Marshall County Sheriff's deputies were called to assist when Gustafson allegedly escaped from an arresting officer and ran. He was apprehended and he was charged with serious assault, simple assault, and escape. Gustafson is being held currently in the Marshall County Jail. The Iowa Association of Legal Secretaries held its 19th annual meeting at the Best Western Regency in Marshalltown over the weekend, and a city woman was elected president of the organization. Here's a report. The Legal Secretaries Association held its annual convention to conduct business and elect officers for the coming year. Eileen Buchanan of Marshalltown was chosen as the organization's president. She explained the purpose of the group. We are uh, formed to promote professionalism and education in the legal profession for legal office workers. Marshalltown Legal Secretary Gloria Welp talked about some of the benefits she gains by belonging to the organization. Well, it helps me to learn new things and to better my skills so that I am better able to serve my boss in the legal capacity. We offer a very substantial um, educational program 
and I think I have gained uh, quite a bit from belonging, belonging and it's very beneficial. The Legal Secretaries Association must be fond of Marshalltown if the convention's track record means anything. Local chapter member Gloria DeBauer explains and talks about the organization's scholarship program. The very first convention was held here about 20 years ago and then in 1976 we had, uh, we hosted the convention and then this year, so this is our third time. Each local chapter gives a scholarship and then as a state association we have a $300 scholarship. Any high school student or any college student is uh, welcome to apply for these scholarships. We'll be back with more News Scene 39, including local and state stories, right after these messages. A Grinnell youth, 17-year-old Todd Sisson, was taken to Iowa Methodist Medical Center in Des Moines with leg injuries after a minibike accident in a gravel parking lot in Marshalltown. Police say the weekend mishap occurred when Sisson lost control of the so-described homemade minibike, throwing both Sisson and a passenger, 18-year-old Craig Stames, to the ground. Stames, also of Grinnell, was not injured. Sisson was charged with failure to maintain control of his vehicle and damage was minimal. A Tama man, Larry Vahonek, was charged this weekend with failure to stop in an assured clear distance and operating a vehicle while intoxicated following an incident at the intersection of South Center and Boone Streets. Investigating officers say a pickup truck driven by Vahonek slammed into a car operated by Ralph Latham of Central City. Damage was estimated at $2,300. Five ensembles from Marshalltown High School participated in the state large group music contest. In that contest, the groups received number ratings, with one being the highest and five the lowest. While the city groups fared very well with Division I ratings received by the mixed chorus, the orchestra strings, and the wind ensemble concert band. The symphonic band brought home a two rating, while the girls' chorus, which performed for comment only, received some positive feedback from the judges, according to MHS band director Jim Jerry Ellingson. He added that all those involved with the groups are very proud of the performances. Saturday night was prom night for Marshalltown High School students and couples in formals and tuxedos were out in force. As the prom tradition continues, so does the tradition of the after prom party, which is sponsored by Pride, a parents group promoting chemical free activities. Pride held a car wash Saturday to raise money for the after prom party and here's a report. Pride's car wash was held in the parking lot of the Wilp Geffy Law Office at the corner of Olive and Center Streets. Chairman of After Prom Activities, David Clark, seemed to be pleased with the turnout. The car wash is sponsored by the Pride Group, and we're helping with the After Prom activity this year. Prom's tonight, and after prom, the students are invited to come out to the Center Street Mall and participate in activities we have out there. The movie Top Gun is showing, there's a casino, there are different activities uh, like a lip sync contest, miniature golf, different things like that, a disc jockey. It's all an attempt to provide a recreational activity for the kids after prom, to keep them off the streets and having fun uh, in a controlled area. And you can see we have lots of enthusiastic supporters who are helping us wash cars today. The after prom party at the Marshalltown Mall was also a success as hundreds of students turned out to enjoy the fun. Turning to state news, a bill to raise the salaries of Iowa teachers by nearly $100 million has received a final legislative approval and was sent to the desk of Governor Branstad. But legislators have yet to act on a companion measure to provide the funds for higher teacher salaries. And Governor Branstad says he won't support the tax plan compromise that has emerged in the closing days of the 1987 Iowa legislative session. Democrats who run the legislature say Branstad's tax programs would sacrifice fairness to Iowans in an attempt to bolster economic development. Now for a look at the top world national headlines. Let's check in with CNN. <laughs> In the headlines, the Supreme Court has upheld a California law and ruled unanimously that states may force Rotary Clubs to admit women to the men-only organization. A guest host for the PTL Club, the Reverend Chuck Milhoff, stands in this week until a permanent replacement for Jim and Tammy Baker can be found. And congressional hearings on the Iran-Contra affair go public tomorrow, bumping a lot of soap operas and game shows from their regular time slots. With the top stories, I'm Stan Case. 
For the details on these and many other stories, be sure to stay tuned for CNN Headline News. That's right after News Scene 39. Jim Collin will have all the weather details when we return right after this. Today turned out to be a pretty nice day for the Marshalltown area. We did start off with a little bit of cloud cover this morning, but by midday, these clouds started to part and we went to mostly partly cloudy conditions. But the weather is going to continue to get a little better tomorrow. We're looking for mostly sunny conditions as the clouds begin to move away from us towards the east. Iowa will see sunny skies. As for the rest of the nation, down here in the lower Mississippi Valley, they can expect to see some thunderstorms all the way from Arkansas into Louisiana, also into Mississippi. And the eastern two-thirds of Texas will also see thunderstorms tomorrow. And then as for the rest of the nation, because of high pressure dominating the northern part, they're going to see mostly partly cloudy to uh, sunny skies. Also out here in the eastern part of the nation, mainly on the Atlantic coast, they're going to be seeing uh, a lot of rain showers all the way from the mid-Atlantic states up into the lower New England and mid New England states. As for Florida, they're under a little bit of high pressure. They'll have mostly sunny skies down in that area. Out here on the western coast, low pressure is slowly developing down here in the Gulf of California, and it's going to be causing some showers to begin developing in the later part of the week. Again, high pressure mostly here in the uh, Montana, North Dakota, and also continuing out here to the Pacific Northwest, and they're under mostly clear conditions and will remain so at least for the next couple of days. We'll be back in a moment to talk about the local forecast right after this. Let's take a look right now at the current conditions for the Marshalltown area. We have 70 degrees outside today. Uh, that's actually our high for today. And winds are about 20 miles per hour out of the southeast. And the barometric pressure is at 30.22 and falling to give you some kind of uh, Oh, a look at how it was across the nation. Temperatures were around 40 degrees in Denver, Colorado, to 97 in Palm Springs, California. So there's quite a difference there. Let's take a look right now at the forecast for tonight. Clear to partly cloudy. We'll have a low of about 43 degrees. And Tuesday's going to be sunny and mild. We'll have a high of about 73. Winds will be out of the southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then the forecast for Tuesday night, clear to partly cloudy with a low of about 45. Wednesday's going to be partly cloudy and mild with a 30% chance of thunder shower and a high of about 73 degrees. So again, that's how things are shaping up for us here weather-wise. And right now we go back to Jim and Ann. Thanks a lot, Jim. Monday night means Ann White and a Being Well feature, and she's got a good one for us tonight. That's right, Being Well in Body, Mind, and Spirit. That's the theme of the Marshalltown Y. Director of the YMCA, Bob Brown, stresses the many programs offered at the Marshalltown Y, which he described as health enhancement. Well, we, uh, we start with the premise that, our, that the reason we're here is to provide opportunity and motivation for health enhancement. A lot of people don't consider the activities, don't, aren't aware that the activities that we do are really health education in nature. Example, you take a soccer program. Uh, one of the best cardiovascular sports is soccer. And the children are doing that. They don't know they're doing it, they're having fun doing it, and that's part of the trick. Uh, youth basketball is another cardiovascular sport. So those types of what we call skill development activities are really, in a sense, health enhancement activities for youth. The soccer, the youth sports, the swimming, the movement education, gymnastics, the dance that the YW has, all those become, fall into that bag of, of the, the beginning or the seeds of cardiovascular health and training. So then we have those activities. Then you move into the adult area as I mentioned before, you have the facility as a whole, and then you look for ways to help those people stay motivated. Uh, an exercise class is a very good motivator. You see your friends there. Example, my wife comes down twice a week, and she has friends that she sees, and that's camaraderie. And you have your racquetball buddies that you see every noon, or your lap swim people. You, you know, every morning at 5.30 you see them, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And, and then the profile test I mentioned. So YW would then have the, uh, the educational uh, classroom, 10-week uh, class or so for so many dollars, and bring in an expert in that field. And that's the non-physical side, so to speak. And it has to, it, 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 health is not just physical, it's not just running, it's, it's a total stress reduction, it's, it's watching what you put in your body, it's moving the body, using the body. The Nautilus, um, if my memory serves me right, became popular about 
up to 10 years ago. And what it is, uh, it's, a, it's a nice balanced way for people of all ages to go in and go through a routine on about nine stations, hit the muscle groups, we call it, and you, you walk through the program in about 20 minutes. We are a prevention agency and intervention agency. You won't find doctors here in operating tables, but uh, we've been doing this for 100 years, trying to help people with their enhancing their health to live a quality of life that is above what they normally would have. Okay. Well, we've seen are only a few of the health-related activities at the Y. Offered, of course, for local and area residents of all ages. Well, the YWCA also has classes in cooking for health, relaxing trips by bus to Iowa and out-of-state locations, which many over 50 people take advantage of. And then there are multitudes of youth sports offered at various times of the year, such as football and track. Now, Bob Brown says people many times take better care of their cars than they do their bodies. And he suggests for a good physical tune-up, the Y is certainly the place to go. Jim? Thanks, Ann. Well, Chuck Carpenter's on vacation this week, and our man of many talents, Jim Conlon, will be sitting behind the sports desk when we return right after this. Good evening, everybody. The Marshalltown High School girls golf team is having an excellent year so far with a seven win and one loss standing. The Cats are knocking good rounds of golf these days, and golf coach Phil Henning talks about the hard work for the short game. Well, definitely, if you start off with good fundamental basics and then get a lot of repetitions in at them, pretty soon you develop a very good feel for the, the technique involved. And chipping and putting and fairway shots and teeing off, those types of things, it just takes a lot of repetitions to get used to them. In area track action today, weather permitting, the Mid-Iowa Conference Boys and Girls Meets will be held in Colo, and that means Colo, LDF, Semco, and Garwin Green Mountain. The BCL, UW Boys and Girls Track Teams will have their conference meets in Cedar Falls. The Eldora New Providence Boys will host Grundy Center and Ackley Geneva. In golf action, weather permitting, the Bobcat Girls will compete at the Newton Invitational, and the Bobcat Boys will host Fort Dodge in Mason City at Elmwood. The West Marshall Girls will compete at the BCL, UW, invite in Conrad. In tennis action today, the Bobcat girls will host Ames while the boys play at Acony and the South Tama girls play at Grundy Center. And the MCC women's softball team will host Simpson, uh, or did host Simpson this afternoon at 2.30 in a twin bill. The MCC men's golf team will play the first 18 holes of their conference tournament today in Fort Dodge. And in the Taylors made right out of towners, 14 and 16 inch softball tournaments held at the South 6th Street Complex. TikTok of Boone and H&F from Marshalltown came out of the champions on Sunday. TikTok uh, beat the Nailers from Marshalltown 2-0 for the 14-inch championship and Gene Skelly defeated Carpet Country 5-4 in 16 innings for third and fourth respectively and in the 16-inch competition at H&F beat Gethman's Kirby Company 4 and 3 for the championship and the Melbourne Grain Company beat Bonds Tire for third place 4 to 3. Marshalltown area physicians will be giving athletic physicals Wednesday, May 13th to all students with the exception of those entering the 7th or 10th grades. The girls will have their physicals at 6 and the boys at 7 o'clock. A pre-participation medical history form is required to be signed by both student and parent before the physicals can be given and forms may be picked up at the Marshalltown High School Principal's Office or any of the Marshalltown Junior High Schools. Ninth grade students who plan to take part in high school baseball or softball this summer must have their physicals completed by June 1st. Former Iowa quarterback Chuck Long says he's excited that he will get an opportunity to show he can lead the Detroit Lions. Protracted uh, contract negotiations last year kept Long from reporting to the National Football League team until training camp was almost over and kept him on the sidelines for most of last season. But at preparations for the 1987 season at the Lions minicamp, coach Darrell Rogers says Long is the number one quarterback and will have every opportunity to show if he can lead the team. Long says he is confident he can do the job. He started the last two games of the 1986 season losing both uh, after watching earlier as veterans Joe Ferguson and Eric Hipple got most of the playing time. We'll be back with more sports right after this. 
It was opening ceremony Sunday at the South 12th Street Complex. All teams were introduced uh, with 116 teams on tap to play this year in Marshalltown. Marshalltown High School uh, baseball coach Brad Clement uh, spoke to the players and families at the opening ceremonies and Marshalltown Mayor Stan Brown threw out the first pitch of the new season. And the John Page family was honored for their many hours of work they have given the Little League organization over the years, the Little League will play their games seven days a week as the year goes along. A hunter safety course will be held free of charge for all boys and girls at least 12 years of age from 6.30 to 9.30 on Thursday and from 8 to 4 p.m. on May 9th at the Isaac Walton League. Uh, the course is required by Iowa law before the kids can get a hunting license. Hunting laws, rules, ethics, first aid, water safety, gun safety, history of firearms, archery, gun handling, and live firing on the range will be covered. This will be followed by a test. This is sponsored by the Conservation Board and the Ikes, you can call Ed Moore or the Conservation Board to sign up. And here's some action at Marshalltown Speedway on Friday night in the Thunder Cars. In the first heat, Jack Fratham of Perry won, and Rod Cleghorn was second in street stocks. Heat one, Greg DeFrance of Albion was first. Jeff Havlick was second. Jeff Schroyer was third. In heat two of the street stocks, Dave Botts of Marshalltown was first. Tommy Thompson second. In the modifieds, uh, heat one, Randy Campy of Baxter was first. Jim Bullman was second, and Ron Hurst played third. Heat two, Denny Frank of Fairbank was first place. Jim Sands was second. Glenn Woodard of third. He three. Dwayne Van Deest of Conrad was first. Kevin Pittman second. Larry Grafton third. And in the late models, heat one. Mitch Fratheim of Decora was first. Wes Murrett was second. Greg Hunter was third. And he two. Jeff Akey was first. Greg Jacobs second. Dick Schultz was third. And in the features, Greg DeFrance was first. Doug Smith was of Albion was second. And also in the trophy dash, Dick Schultz. Uh, took that and in, also in the feature uh, Greg Jacobs of Des Moines was first place, Mitch Freedom was second, Denny Osborne was third and Daryl DeFrance was in fourth place. And also in tonight, or rather in uh, sports tonight, there is one afternoon game on the baseball schedule with the Los Angeles Dodgers visiting Chicago. The Cubs have been playing well with nine wins in their last 12 games. St. Louis Cardinals with a home game against San Francisco tonight begin the day with a half game lead over the Cubs in NL East. That's a look at sports. Thank you, Jim. And we'll be back with a final look at the forecast right after this. Sounds like the fair weather will continue. Fair weather will continue at least for the next couple of days, but we do have a chance of some thunder showers coming into the forecast by Tuesday. But it's only just a slight chance, so uh, nothing too much to worry about. So it's going to be a pretty nice week. Great. That's it for News Scene 39. Thanks for watching. Good night. This has been News Scene 39. When you see news happening, call News Scene 752 or 122.